So I focus on the first years of life, on the zero to five, um, and on social and emotional development, and specifically on the current new area of social neuroscience, which um, really deals with the way our brain implements social development. What are the brain substrates and mechanisms and processes and the hormonal, I study the hormones that support children's attachment and social and, emo and emotional development. Uh, we combine it with very careful behavior observations of children's social development. So we are interested to see what is in our brain that help us be social creatures, uh, engage in relationship, develop empathy, understand what other people are thinking, uh, regulate our emotions, uh, develop empathy, and all those abilities are formed in the first years of life on the basis of our attachment to our mother, to our father, to our caregiver, to our friends. Uh, and this is why it's so important. And because it is so important, uh, we also engage in several longitudinal studies. So we follow children from the time they are newborn until our first cohorts are now adolescents. And we see what happens, how the mechanisms that you learn when you are really young, how they shape your social and emotional development um, throughout life actually, across childhood and adolescence and early adulthood. What are the brain patterns that are shaped and then they contribute to your development later on. And the other two aspects of our research is what happened when you don't get the right parenting. For instance, if you are born to a depressed mother and she can provide adequate parenting. So what happens to your brain? What happens to your behavior? What happens to your social development if you grow up in the context of depressed mothers? Or what happens if you're born prematurely and the bonding between mother and infant is ruptured? And then two, three, four months, children are in the hospital and can't bond with their mothers. How is this repaired? Could it be repaired later on? And we also deal with um, uh, conditions such as war or trauma or contextual trauma, how it affects development. And the final aspect of what we do, which I think is critically important and is also related to the think tank mission, is we try to develop very specific interventions for young children on the basis of current advances in neuroscience. So to take what we've learned so that it doesn't stay in the ivory tower for the next 20 years, but bring bench to bedside, bring what we have learned about the development of children at risk, what is wrong, what is missing, and try to develop very, very specific interventions that implement those findings and then test them if they really indeed help children and parents improve in their social emotional development. So there is the basic science piece, there is a psychopathology piece, and there is the intervention piece to my work. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful program. I think Vicky and Ron and everybody who's been doing this work really should be commented for, for undertaking such a thing. And it's been an amazing week for me to see. And I think the most important uh, thing for young parents, now most parents need to work when their children are young, most mothers need to work when their children are young. It's not even a question. Maternal employment is not even an option. Most mothers need to work. And I think the most important thing when mothers need to work is high level childcare. Childcare by people who know how to deal with children, know how to develop their social and moral and empathic development. And I think this program, since most, I, un I heard yesterday, I was amazed to hear that 70 to 80% of uh, childcare providers are trained by the community college. So really bring, this is a beautiful program that they did, bringing knowledge, really bringing current knowledge to those who have hands-on experience, those who actually take care of children. And I don't think with, without this uh, think tank initiative, uh, such knowledge could have 
come. So training the trainers, this, is, this was such a lovely way to meet the fellows who each one of them teaches hundreds of caregivers who actually go to take care of much of the state's children. They produced work at the highest scientific level. It's the kind of work that you see at scientific conferences real project, real research that had a human touch to it. And I think they were all very, very passionate about what they were doing and all the programs they did were on target, exquisite, right on time and done very well, very professional. So I think, and also th there was like a very warm atmosphere between the fellows. So I think this is the first cohort, and then this week came in the next cohort. And I, I think with building cohort, um, the, I think the, the, the mission of the think tank is to, to build a community of fellows who can then go on out to the world and, uh, and really bring support or provide support to child care providers and to parents and emphasize again the old values of what it means to parent. It means to parent is to be close to your child, is to be attuned to your child, is to be able to set limits to your child, is to be able to develop values and morality and a social core and community and social reciprocity. And I think this is, as the years go by and more and more fellows would become part of the Sims man think tank family, I think this would have a much greater impact. And I'm very grateful to Ron and Vicky for letting me be part of that family that I'm sure would do great things. The first thing I think it's important to say is that up until now, up until this point in history, most parents raise their children in the context of extended families and extended family throughout history and across cultural communities served as the major source of support to young parents because it's nearly impossible to raise a child without grandparents and aunties and neighbors and a community and everybody together, the whole village raises the child. And now the village has just been taken apart and it's much harder to raise a child now uh, Parents are both working and there's no sense of community. So I think um, the most important thing that, that is, is to give childcare that is reliable and knowledgeable and is able to provide the right type of setting that parents can learn about how to parent their children, that the care providers know exactly what to do with children. There are all kinds of children, some adjust better, some are adjust a little less well. And I think the care providers should be, the child care centers should become this source of support to parent at many level. Provide support at the level of knowledge base. Provide support at the level of consultation. Provide support at the level of how to actually deal with the children and develop friendship or connection between group of parents. And this is a very important source for the parents to feel again a sense of community. I know when my kids were little, our friends basically were th the, f the parents of, ch of the children in our children's kindergarten and nursery and childcare. Th these become your, your friends and neighbors and community. So I think there's a very central role to those childcare. And this program, the think tank, which attempts to educate those caregivers to actually fulfill this supportive role that they're given by the culture now when the extended family is falling apart. I think it's very important to support that program. I think support at the level of knowledge. I think support at the level of uh, available services. I think this is very, very important. Available services to to treat infants and young children. I think there are very few of them throughout the country and more and more are open. Uh, places where parents can go to when things go wrong for their children, sometimes for extended support, but oftentimes just for brief interventions. I think we need to develop these kind of interventions for various types of children disorders or maladjustment. 
Uh, so this is one thing uh, that we need. I think um, there should be uh, much more affordable care for young parents, and I think there should be professional uh, places where parents can seek help. I think parents nowadays are very confused about how to go about parenting. There has been a certain continuity from parent to child, so with the breaking of the extended family, there's also some insecurity. Parents feel very s insecure about how to parent their children. There are a lot more demands about children. Parents really want their children to be very smart, go to the first tier colleges, uh, do well in school, do well in sport. There's a lot of goals parents want for their children and a lot of time they forget that family and parenting is just about giving a child a sense of security. So I think uh, a, a movement that would emphasize the importance of parent-child attachment and attunement and how to put limit to your children, this is critical for parents to know that they are the primary source of support and attachment to their children, that it's okay to say no to a child, it's okay to put limits to children, and that children development of personhood, of selfhood, of moral values are just as important as developing skills that would get you into Harvard. And I think parents need to know about these things. They have to be validated and empowered in doing these things that are now they don't really know how to do. Yesterday in my talk I showed two newborns in the first day of life interacting with their mothers. So the first mother was a very synchronous and attuned mother. She was looking at her newborn, she was touching the baby, she was adapting her stimulation to the baby signal. You could see a peaceful, secure, wonderful, attuned interaction between a mother and her baby. The other mother was holding the baby, was, was not at all involved with interacting with the baby. She was holding the baby facing the other way. She didn't provide any maternal behavior. She wasn't looking at the infant signal. And we followed these children periodically from the time, from the day they were born until they're 18 years of age. We are now seeing these children brain. We're imaging the brain of those two 18 years old, but we follow them throughout their childhood. And what we see is that the first diet went on to a wonderful trajectory of relationship, of synchrony, of mutuality between the mother and the infant, and then with the father, and then when they were three years of age, we already saw them at childcare. And this child was very, very reciprocal with his friends in kindergarten, and was able to resolve even the smallest conflict that children have when they're three years of, of age, like who is going to take the, co the red color when both like it. He was able to say, well, you take it first and I take it second, like resolve conflict in a way that's social and reciprocal. And then as childhood go on, he was more intelligent, but intelligent in a way that he understood the messages that are transmitted non-verbally through facial expression. And then when he was a young teenager, he was able to resolve conflicts with schools in a better way. He was much more of a leader. In terms of uh, hormones, he had much less stress hormone. He was much less stress prone. And you see the brain structure and the hormones when the child is 18 as you could see those structure that, a that enable one to get reward from social relationship. So this is a child that is ready for life. He's ready to engage in life. He's well regulated. He's not stressed and he enjoys social relationship. Whereas you see the second child, he's very, very stress prone. He easily cries. When you see even the smallest stimulation, I showed a picture when they have a toy in front of the kid and then they take the toy away and the kid can't touch it. This kid cries very much and can't self-soothe. In kindergarten, he tends to either resolve conflict in an aggressive way or withdraw when there is some kind of conflict. During school, he does much less well in social relationship. He's much less loved by his peers. And then when you look at the brain la later on, you see much higher level of stress hormones, much greater anxiety in 
intimate relationship or any kind of social relationship and that the brain develops not to derive so much engagement. That social relationship for this kid is not a source of joy but a source of anxiety. So here, starting from the first day of life, these Ma this mother probably was stressed, was depressed, didn't know how important it is to really attend to her baby when the baby is young. Maybe she just didn't know, and if she would have known better, the kid would have been off to a different trajectory. And it's important to say that brain structures are built during these three years. And if we just teach mothers how important, we have an intervention with depressed mothers and I showed this, uh, this in my talk a few days ago. I showed mother-infant interaction very anxious in the beginning. And nine sessions later, you see a wonderful interaction of a mother and a baby. And she touches and she vocalizes it and everything goes. And it's only nine sessions we were able to help the mother realize how much her six months old infant needs her. And I think this is the calling, this is what um, the think tank is taking upon themselves, is to really impart knowledge, is to really make sure those who come in contact with the mothers and the babies and the little children can tell the mothers that do not interact in this way with their children. You should know Touch your infant, look at your infant, smile to your infant, synchronize with your infant, because this is your key, not only to um, social success, but also to academic success, to life achievement, to your child well-being in the future.